Now more than ever, innovative technologies are fueling change and sparking new ways of thinking. Collaboration between corporations and startups is key to staying at the forefront of these trends. However, finding the right startups can be expensive, time-consuming, and ineffective. But Plug and Play is here to help. As a corporate partner, you will gain access to a whole ecosystem of innovation. Discover startups that meet your tech interests. Stay updated on the latest trends and network with industry peers. We will help you during every stage of your innovation journey, no matter where you are and where you want to go. Get in touch today. So, countdowns up, gong has rang. Welcome to the kickoff of our seventh batch of Startup Quiz here. We're really excited to welcome you here today for our first, let's say, light hybrid event, still in the studio setup, but we have guests here in the office. So welcome to our guests that came here to Munich to join us sort of networking after and during the event. Thank you to our partners, startups, and the ecosystem for coming. And also to those dialing in. My name is Frederico Rohr. I'm the head of the Munich office and the director of the Startup Creosphere program. And it is a pleasure for me to moderate today for this session for this first light version of the hybrid event. And before we kick it off, of course, also for our virtual fellows joining, welcome. And there are lots of opportunities for all of us to network today on the platform Hop In where on the one hand side, you have plenty of time during the networking break to visit the startups at the virtual startup booths and where you can also download the pitch decks, schedule meetings, and you can see all participants of the event on the right hand side. And you can actually click on the participants and also schedule meetings for during and after the event to really make the most of it and to stay in touch and to really enjoy the networking. With that being said, um, a couple of general points for today, of course, first the exciting agenda. So there will be a short introduction by myself on Startup Creosphere and Plug and Play and what we have been doing over the past three years and what this batch is also going to be about, followed by an inspirational keynote by the CEO of Surrogate. Um, and then we go right into it with the startup pitches and the introductions from our corporate partners first Roche, then Novo Nordisk, and then Biotronic on what topics they will actually focus on in this batch and what their collaboration with us is all about. So with that being said, we can jump right into the introduction and you can just lay back and enjoy. There will be a short video to share a little bit about Startup Creosphere and what we have been doing. Thank you. Startup Creosphere is one of the largest innovation platforms for digital health solutions globally. The Accelerator program was founded by Roche and Plug and Play in Munich, Germany in 2018. Building on the successful program and proven concept from Munich, Startup Creosphere has launched new locations all over the globe. Startup Creosphere has created a dynamic ecosystem that provides an open innovation platform to digitally transform healthcare together. Enabling access to innovation and real engagement between corporates and startups, Startup Creosphere fosters new ideas, new business models, as well as a mindset shift, and ultimately the development of digital solutions that help improve patients' lives. Startup Creosphere is continuously scouting for the best startups in specific focus areas defined by the corporate partners. They aim at leveraging new digital solutions based on software, AI and sensors to optimize their internal processes as well as improve patients' lives in different disease areas. The most promising startups get selected and invited to participate in a 12-week accelerator program, a so-called batch. During the batch, the startups and dedicated pilot owners coming from the business and R&D teams of the corporate partners work on a pilot project together. 
This co-creation process is accompanied by a mentoring and coaching program for the startups. At the end of the batch cycle, corporate partners and startups jointly decide on a path forward that ultimately culminates in transforming healthcare together. So, thank you very much for your attention here. A couple of more words to add. You've already learned about what we do and our wordings with the so-called batch and that it's a lot about the mindset shift. But what we have actually done and how we started, so we are uh, the global innovation platform Plug and Play and um, we are the most active VC in early stage startups. So we do two different things just for you to understand a little bit more about our background. On the one hand side, we support corporate partners within their innovation journey to really work with startups, but also to get to know startups, to, to get an idea and to change the mindset within the corporation and to build and shape new technologies together. And on the one hand, other side, we also invest in startups in early stages. And we are the most active we see in early stages across the globe. And we are clustered into different verticals depending on the industry. But now for today, talking about plug and play startup Creesphere, our healthcare program that we have launched two years ago together with Roche Diagnostics, as you already heard, I would like to welcome our corporate partners for today's event. So welcome Roche, Biotronic, Novo Nordisk and Accenture to this platform and to this batch. Thank you for your trust in working with us to build and the same and to share the same mission of the transformation of healthcare together. With that being said, here are a couple of examples of this shaping healthcare together, which is some of the elements that hopefully you batch seven startups, and it's all about you in this upcoming batch, will also be part of in one of these pillars that you can see here. So some examples just for you to get an idea of the collaboration and the co-creation approach that we're having together with our corporate partners is either for technology and solution assessment, for market access and research, or for co-development into new fields, into the healthcare field. So here you can see some examples, and that's great also for you to hopefully be part of this uh, in the next program. And as already mentioned in Munich three years ago, Munich is the mothership of Startup Crease here, but we have also expanded to then. We've expanded to Silicon Valley and also to Singapore, and we are growing continuously, and our healthcare footprint is across all the globe. We look for the right startups across the globe, and we work with you, our partners across the globe as well. And with that being said, just a little summary of our activities from the past three years. We had over seven batches, counting batch zero, and with many corporate partners currently with four of them present in this batch. And we had over 67 startups that we were piloting with within our dedicated program in a very international scale with presentations in over 14 countries. We have facilitated a lot of matchmaking sessions and hosted over 50 events. So there has been a lot of things going on that help with our mission to transform healthcare together. With that being said, batch seven, um, big number, big topics we're having here. It's all along the value chain of healthcare from patient education to disease management, the lab of the future, voice analytics, smart data annotation or advanced data analytics. So, Welcome to the program, Batch 7 Startups. And um, how do these startups actually come to this big day today? It is a long iterative process between the business units from our corporate partners, so-called pilot owners, who give us their focus topics in the beginning. And then throughout this four months program, together with the Plug and Play Ventures team, we choose the right startups for their business units needs to then be invited to today's event. So, Welcome and congratulations for being chosen to this batch. And here you see the logos of our batch seven startups that we will also be soon listening to in the pitches. So welcome to the batch and also great that we have some of this batch startups present with us here today. And they are also with the Global Scope. So good morning to the US. We have some startups um, from the US pitching today from the UK, from Germany and from Switzerland. So again, a pretty global presence here. And uh, with that being said, um, yes, this is all about you and thank you for joining us and for your trust here. All right, 
With that being said, let's get right into it. With me here in the studio setting, I would like to welcome Dr. Jochen Holebaus with me here today. Hi, Jochen. Thank you for joining. Jochen is the head hmm. of Digital Health Solutions for Roche Diagnostics, Health Innovation, I'm sorry. And um, Jochen has been starting Startup Careersphere from before day one. And um, he will share a little bit with us today on what Roche will be working on. So Jochen, great to have you and the um, stage is yours. Thanks a lot and uh, thanks a lot for having me here on site. Uh, it really <laughs> feels, uh, feels good to be uh, back from the virtual world in, in the real world. And uh, yeah, I just want to say a few words before we start uh, with uh, the startup pitches. So, um, you know, looking back, uh, <clears throat> so this is patch number seven, uh, the first one of our renewed engagement. Uh, we announced that already during the last batch that uh, after the three years, we have renewed our engagement for another three years for Startup Creosphere together with Plug and Play. Um, and uh, so, yeah, looking forward to transform healthcare even more. Um, this slide has been advanced also from the last one because you never should stop uh, changing and innovating and going forward. So uh, last time we already had the three boxes here you know, to show our open innovation approach, how we work with authorities, we work with corporate partners. Obviously, we, we work with uh, startups beyond Startup Creosphere. We also have other vehicles like the, the Rocks uh, in Germany or the Starfinder Lab in, in Israel. But we want to do now in addition is to actually also look into working more with health ecosystems. Um, we call this kind of usability and evidence generation hubs. And we have just heard also in the keynote, how important it is actually to bring things into the real world, close to the patients. And that is often a challenge because things work well in a clinical trial. That might work well in, in, a, in a setting with a small number of patients, but then, you know, get the real people to use it, get the patients to use it, get the providers to use it, and also the payers that actually ultimately need to uh, pay for this and need to have the benefit. So we want to build or expand Startup Creosphere also into some kind of a usability and, and evidence generation hub. And that is something we, we are currently working on. When we look uh, a little bit back uh, at our journey, I'm not going through all these numbers. I think uh, uh, the most important ones are on the left side, the, the 59 startup participants we had uh, in Munich, uh, including also four from, from Singapore that we have currently in the batch. Um, and everybody that contributed or was participating in the Roche program uh, or the Startup Creosphere program uh, with Roche as a pilot owner knows that there's actually a very strong commitment and excitement from the Roche people, uh, from the topic owners to work with the startups to really co-create. And we also have seen before from Federica the, that we're actually going through a very thorough selection process. So we make sure that whoever comes to the program actually has someone in the Roche uh, business uh, or R&D team that is really interested to work with them and do something and also have something tangible at the end of the program, which then going to the right side of, of the chart, you see that we have a higher than 50% follow up rate. And I think also quite, quite impressive to see that we have 16 solutions where we're working in the real world setting or that we have actually uh, 18 projects uh, or 16 solutions we have brought into Roche products or projects. So um, it's not just the program, it's really something happening afterwards and changing uh, the Roche solutions, but also, of course, transforming then, then healthcare. Um, this slide is also a regular one, so to say. Um, what changes, of course, are the startups. I think what uh, hasn't changed in the last batches is, is what are we focusing on? Um, internal value chain, then so making our R&D also more efficient uh, than the customer facing solutions on our lab, more the traditional customers we have, but then physicians and, and increasingly patients. But then also on the right side, you know, what we just also uh, I mentioned with the evidence generation hubs, we want to ultimately demonstrate the value to the healthcare systems and to the payers, to the providers, because these are the ones that need to get the benefit but also need to then uh, be able to, to pay for it. And they only can do that if it really is a, is a, is a value for them. So this time uh, we have a little bit of different focus when you look at the startups. And I will, of course, not go into detail because the pitches will be that uh, for that. 
Um, last time we had a little bit really patient facing solutions. Uh, and this time we are a little bit more, let's say, in the operational side of things. But it's you know, great in healthcare that you have so many things where digital can play a role and can, can improve the way we be doing that. Um, so on the one hand, we have uh, advanced data analytics, which is more also on getting more data, the right data in a good quality uh, in the lab. Uh, but then also we have things like the workflow or, or, or labeling of samples, which is a yet another complex situation, right? If you don't have that under control from the blood straw until the lab, for example, a lot of things can go wrong here. And then last but not least, the value-based healthcare, a topic we also had already last time addressed, where you know, you know you really need to make sure to show the outcome. And that is not so easy, right? I'm always saying, well, if my car, if I pick it up from the garage and it doesn't run, well, okay, I pretty much know what happened, right? They did something wrong. It's not so easy in healthcare because there are so many people involved in diagnosing, decision-making, treatment, that it's very hard to say at the end, okay, this was responsible for improving the outcome or making the outcome worse. But there are concepts on doing that and then also measuring that, and that's the, the value-based healthcare topic. So with that, uh, I'm really looking forward to the pitches uh, and uh, yeah, wish everybody a great, great, great time today. Thank you very much, Jochen. Thank you for explaining a little bit about the history and also about this batch. And I think we have some exciting startups lined up here today and looking forward to the pitches. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now a quick change and now we are getting into the pitches and I would like to introduce my dear colleague Fabian Scheubenflug. Fabian is our venture associate here in the Munich Startup Creature team and leading the ventures activities together with his team to actually find these great startups that we have presenting here today. So Fabian, handing over to you, Fabian will be presenting the startup pitches. Thank you. Thank you very much, Federica. It's great to be back and we're very excited to kick things off with the first pitches. But before we do that, a uh, quick reminder, we're using Hopin. Hopin has a lot of functionalities. On the one hand side, you can go to the search bar, you can find all the attendees in the event and you can mingle, uh, request meetings, ETC. But then on the left hand side here on the bottom, you see something called expert. If you go there, you will find all the startups, the so-called startup booths. Um, you can click on them, you can scroll down and we'll find, well, their pitch decks, but be, uh, above that, you will also have the opportunity later on to directly have a teleconference with them, um, to go through the website, to go through their LinkedIn, um, and then schedule follow-up meetings. So please make most of that platform um, and really enjoy all the pitches that are coming up. The next pitches that we're going to see are seven pitches. We will have four pitches by, uh, for Roche and three for Biotronic working on individual um, projects together with their dedicated pilot team. With that, I'd, li I'd like to directly jump into the first pitch. Um, it's Deontex. Well, what is Deontex essentially? We've heard the buzzwords around value-based healthcare. We've just heard it uh, from Jochen also um, and what value-based healthcare has to do with patient pathway mapping um, and how Deontex come into that play from uh, in the clinical environment from primary to uh, tertiary um, uh, sec uh, systems well Vivek will tell you all about it so Vivek it's great to have you here today we're really looking forward to your pitch um, so please feel free to take us away Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Uh, I'm Vivek Patkar, an old-fashioned clinician in a tech company. And so please excuse me if there are any technical glitches because I'm not uh, very used to these type of conferences um, uh, where I'm not there in real. So uh, Deontex is a third-generation clinical decision support um, uh, tech company. And uh, the paradigm, uh, I'm hoping you can see my screen. The paradigm used in the tech is based on cognitive decision model. Uh, cognitive means 
as a cognition and where we humans make decisions uh, after evaluating pros and cons of every action. Uh, the knowledge and workflow engine is a very responsive and powerful. It processes large amount of data and does reasoning in milliseconds. Yet it is very lightweight and can be serialized and multiple instances of the engine can be run in parallel. The AI heritage of the company goes back to our key inventor, late Professor John Fox and his mentor, Herb Simon, a Nobel laureate, as you all know, and who is considered as father of AI. John, in his early days, decided to use clinical medicine as a test ground uh, for applying and testing AI principles. And I had an honor of working with John and his team at CR UK, uh, Cancer Research UK. So we spun out um, Deontics from Cancer Research UK, University College London, where I work, and Oxford University. Uh, as, a part, as a practicing doctor or clinician, I found a number of features of this technology unique and intuitive. This is the result of uh, involvement, close collaboration and involvement of clinicians throughout the development of the tech. Uh, the CDS models, which are mostly available in the market, fall into largely into three um, uh, categories or buckets. Uh, the first generation decision support, uh, which are rule engines and mostly used for alerts, reminders, and auto sets. The second generation decision uh, support um, comprises of decision trees or Bayesian logic uh, used for uh, yes, no type of algorithms. Uh, there is also a very decent black box machine learning algorithms, which um, do not provide any explanation or transparency, but provide just the, the outputs. Deontic CDS, a framework is, is different from all three. Our engine works as a set now, or what you call probably GPS, uh, global positioning system. Uh, and it always provides guidance irrespective uh, of where the patient is, that is where you start. And if uh, as a clinician, you take a different turn than suggested, it still works, unlike decision trees. Uh, the cognitive framework handles uncertainty, incomplete data, and conflicting knowledge, all three famously known as gray zone of medicine. And it is intuitive to the clinicians and patients alike uh, as pros and cons of each decision options are laid out when they are making decisions. The advice is fully transparent, a linking to the exact um, a line or paragraph in the original evidence text, um, unlike machine learning algorithms. Interestingly, the engine can run in either a human supervised mode, uh, mostly used in frontline individual clinical decision support delivery, or it can run in fully autonomous agent type mode for providing most granular analytics by churning large population data sets. So these unique selling points provide a wide range of benefits, which I have listed. Um, for using Deontic CDS and analytics platform. Uh, and usually you will see that they cover uh, clinical, operational, financial, and workforce benefits. So I would not now go through all those. Uh, those are available for you in the slides. These capabilities allow us to apply our platform to diverse market segments, including uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, providers, channel partners like EPR and EMR companies, payers um, and holders of big data. Areas of interest of our customers typically are frontline clinical decision support, either with provider or channel partner, uh, which are typically EPR or EMR as they are called companies. Also prospective and retrospective studies and clinical trial eligibility and big data analytics. Our vision is to be most clinically recommended CDS and analytics platform available, touching the lives of 100 million patients every year in the next five years. So these are some of the list of recent prestigious AI awards that Deontics won, including EU Horizon, 
uh, and NHS X AI uh, Digital Health Technology Award. And also the COVID pathway is an example of frontline clinical decision support, uh, which can be developed, delivered, and updated very quickly. As you know, COVID changes, change, COVID knowledge base change over time very quickly. Our technology is most peer reviewed technology and widely published CDS formalisms. Many dozens of papers are available and I will be happy to, to provide any further information if someone is interested. Thank you all. And thank you CRISPR for providing this opportunity. The Deontix team looks forward to speaking to you individually. And please feel free to get in touch with me or Michelle, our CEO, um, or for any questions or any comments. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Vivek. Um, we love that vision, and we hope to bring it closer to that 100 million with the framework of the program and also our network. Uh, so so uh, thank you so much for dialing in today. And please, to the audience, you know, you have those startup booths uh, where you can directly mingle with Vivek and, uh, well, schedule follow-up meetings. Thank you. All right. So now we've seen a very interesting framework. And that framework is based on data. But data nowadays is very, very siloed still. We have EHR. We have something in the laboratory systems. Then we have personal data and all uh, flying around, but very siloed. Our next company that is joining us, Energen Systems, um, will tell you a little bit more around how they um, tackle that issue. So, Stacy, uh, please join me on stage. Good morning, Stacy. Thank you so much for dialing in at such an early hour. It's great to have you, and the stage is yours. Thank you, David. So I appreciate you guys putting this together. Hello from Savannah, Georgia. Um, so Antigen Systems, Antigen Holdings, we've got a number of organizations that are um, you know, that wrap around a lot of our technology today. Uh, I'm honored to, to be in front of uh, your teams uh, to discuss our pathology tracker platform. Um, I think Roche found us uh, around uh, some of the innovations we're making in that space. Um, and, and in the states obviously we've got uh, a number of challenges uh you know that, that circle in with uh, you know the, the siloed conversation as as Fabian uh, mentioned so just quickly going over kind of what we are um so we are a company founded by physicians uh, we have partnered with uh, some technology groups uh, to leverage uh, physician need um, and put those into real world situations. Um, so we've been uh, developing platforms for the medical industry since 2013 um, and ultimately uh, have quite a few product lines that are um, uh, in a real world scenario, certainly moving towards com commercialization. Pathology Tracker is probably the, the platform that we've taken the furthest, um, but ultimately these are all operating in a, in a real world setting. So our founding team, uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, dermatologists, most surgeons, um, uh, former uh, president of the College of American Pathology and currently operating pathology group uh, based in Southeast Georgia. Um, we cover roughly, um, I believe around 70 hospitals. Um, and then we're working in about 16, 18 uh, physician clinics currently. Um, and so the, the partners came together. We had lots of challenges as we were kind of uh, operating our, our own unique businesses, um, collaborated together to build some solutions, and then ultimately have uh, been bundling a lot of those into different uh, businesses altogether. So Antigen as a whole, uh, we have a, a, a large array of business lines. Uh, we are operating concierge clinics. Uh, those are um, uh, subscription-based model uh, uh, physician clinics. Uh, we have uh, our own line of uh, uh, durable medical equipment supplies that we uh, put into our physician clinics. Um, we developed a number of uh, technology tools to help us operate our physician clinics more efficiently. Uh, from the practice management to the electronic health record systems. We do our revenue cycle management systems, which um, help us uh, process payments uh, in a very efficient and streamlined manner. 
Um, we've put a, a holistic uh, point of sale system at all of our front end uh, onboarding solutions. But today, obviously, uh, we're very focused on um, our pathology tracker platform. I've got it highlighted here, uh, where we are uh, probably one of the, the more cutting edge uh, companies with um, tracking and tracing our, our biopsies and excisions from our dermatology uh, clinics. Now, we do have other tools in the clinical space. Uh, we're doing radiology, uh, molecular pathology tracking. We're tracking our consults and our prior authorizations. All of this is built around the Complete.MD platform, as you can see on the right. You know, it's a suite of tools that ultimately um, our, our vision is to take that platform as a holistic solution um, you know, to market and, and put that into uh, physicians' hands to help streamline uh, the opening and operating of clinics. We're proving that out in our own clinics. Uh, so as we kind of move forward, that's that's the overall vision. So today we're talking about Pathology Tracker, um, which is our laboratory logistics and courier management platform. Uh, the platform itself is, is facing um, all uh, the different facets of our physician uh, physician operations so that uh, we integrate with uh, our LIS systems. We work with our EHRs. Uh, we're putting devices in the hands of couriers, with, uh, in the hands of patients. Um, so, you know, everybody's got a, a, a pane of glass, a, a window into the system. So what started this problem? Well, um, as you know, in the diagnostics business, uh, roughly 70% of all medical decisions are based on pathology and lab results. Um, as a company with a number of uh, dermatology clinics uh, and physician clinics in our space, uh, we had a logistics nightmare. Uh, we were challenged with the amount of uh, lost data, the amount of uh, biopsies that maybe went missing, um, patients having data where the, the staff maybe labeled something incorrectly or uh, results came back you know, and did not get mis uh, matched up correctly. Fax machines obviously were in the middle of the picture for the last number of years. And, uh, you know, even things as simple as a piece of paper on a fax machine rolling out, falling underneath a desk. Uh, we would miss patient uh, results and then ultimately uh, be thumbing through analog binder, binded books uh, trying to find where the specimens are. This is still happening today. Um, and so we noted that, uh, you know, most studies are showing that about 75% of all medical testing errors are happening before anything actually happens in the laboratory. So how do we solve that problem? In addition to those issues, uh, as the physician who is following up with the patient, we were finding that in most physician clinics, and, and, you know, and this is in uh, the VA centers here in, in the US, 31% uh, of problem pathology results we're not being followed up uh, on in, in a timely manner. So we implemented a technology solution to this uh, and really started attacking this from all angles. Um, so Pathology Tracker is built around physical specimen tracking. Uh, we have integrated solutions both in kiosk form as well as um, uh, integrated within the practice management and EHR systems that allow us to generate uh, both uh, digital barcoded systems, but also uh, where I think we have gotten most of our traction has been with the RFID platforms, uh, which allow us to do a lot more data uh, throughput with some of our busier clinics and busier hospital systems and busier labs, um, and ultimately have brought that to market. In addition, we are doing uh, courier optimizations. Um, so as a laboratory with an LIS system integrated into our platform, we're able to generate uh, pickup orders. We're able to see the courier process, uh, where patients are, where couriers need to be um, uh, dispatched to, uh, ultimately see the volumes of uh, uh, specimens as they're coming through the system. Um, we're able to track and trace where the physical specimen has been. Um, as things fall, you know, out of that system. So, for example, if we have a lost specimen, we have the tracking and tracing that gets us back to at least the closest point at which somebody uh, previously have uh, had interacted with that specimen. Uh, we have found a number of uh, you know, fail-safes uh, 
captured in this process through um, you know some of the uh, tool sets and so couriers ultimately you know will find a specimen maybe still sitting in their uh, their platform or in their uh, cars uh, sometimes we'll find them uh, still at a physician clinic um, and then on top of that now that we're capturing all of that data we're able to do a lot of metrics reporting cap compliance uh, notifying the patients the staff uh, dealing with AI workflow automation um, and so I've got some examples here to kind of show you some of the form factors that we've attacked um, so we obviously have mobile applications um, you can see the tracking uh, one of our dermatologists loves to say, you know, when I buy something on Amazon, I can tell where it is when the truck's coming. Uh, it's something as simple as a pair of shoes. Uh, however, I now have a cancer. And what is my capabilities of seeing that data? As, uh, you know, the importance of the, the information that we're tracking, it is probably the biggest travesty that we have prioritized commerce over healthcare, And we do see that as a huge component of what we're uh, focused on. Daisy, unfortunately, I have to interrupt you here. You're a little bit over time, uh, sure. but thank you so much for that great presentation sure. and pointing sure. out and showing some workflows here. Um, great what you're doing. And for all the others that have questions, you can, for the one side, see the pitch decks on the booth, but you can also talk to Stacy uh, during and after the event. So Stacy, thank you so much for being here with us today. Really looking forward to the next three months. Thank you, Fabian. All right, fantastic. So that was already the second company uh, moving quite quickly today. Um, now, as a third one, we're jumping right into uh, reproducibility. So to reproduce any results that you have maybe in research, um, it is always very important to ensure that the environment or the variables are kept the same or fixed. Um, so temperature, for instance, light um, exposure. ETC, a company that is supporting in that reprodu reproducibility is Tag and Track. And I've with me today, Venu uh, from the States. So Venu, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for joining us so early today. Um, and please take us away. The stage is all yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, having us on, on this uh, platform. Uh, we're very excited. Uh, to be part of this program and uh, uh, see how our uh, technology that we're bringing up could help uh, in the diagnostic uh, side, condition monitoring and other uh, areas. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, please uh, feel free to share the screen um, okay. and we can directly put, put you in there. Uh, do you guys see my uh, screen? No, not yet, unfortunately. Uh, one second. I just say share, share, share. Is that good? Okay, we now see it. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, hi, um, so today uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, things that we're doing um, in this space. Uh, basically, what we looked at is uh, uh, we're looking at mainly the pharmaceutical clinical trial supply uh, and uh, see how we can address the uh, more efficient uh, uh, clinical trial supply. And if you see the problems, they're kind of categorized into three parts. Uh, one is inventory tracking effectively from end to end through every handoff. Uh, and then there is a counterfeiting that's happening, um, especially if it is a high value goods, a, a counterfeit uh, gray market uh, gets introduced in the supply chain and there's no effective way to track it. The second issue is condition monitoring of these um, um, assets that are going from the GMP, GDP to the last mile and uh, make sure that in all these handoffs, the temperature is maintained and uh, we use very high precision uh, temperature sensors. The third part is how we can provide regulatory compliance for end-to-end -end, uh, traceability as well as uh, condition monitoring for these products. 
and the way uh, we see in the current market is that um, the there are different ways that the, the problem is uh, looked at, but the main issue is that it is fragmented. And you start with barcodes um, in, in the beginning or the origination, uh, then when your transportation um, to the end uh, uh, usage, uh, you use other tracking devices that are bulky, uh, and then there are offline data logging devices. So what that does is uh, you need manual uh, intervention, uh, and also you need to send these uh, devices through a reverse logistics because uh, you you need them to be uh, returned back from where they originated. Uh, this kind of makes the data and the the traceability fragmented because you have multiple systems uh, doing this. And what we have done is we came up with um, uh, different ways to uh, track this data in a smart label format. And these labels uh, can be a cellular label or their um, a one hop to cloud, which is a uh, Bluetooth based label. And then the data directly goes to the cloud if it is a cellular label. And then you can actually ship your items from your starting point uh, from your GMP or in your clinical trials and then move it uh, to the patient and in a different country. Because these are cellular labels, the data can still come back to you. Um, on, on temperature as well as the condition of that uh, supply that you sent, uh, everything can be uh, monitored in real time. Uh, since there are uh, sensors embedded into these labels, so we can have even track temperatures and uh, high value um, goods that, that, that needs this monitoring. Um, so these are the, some of the products that we're doing. And we also provide uh, uh, two types of services or three types of services. Uh, the main one is uh, uh, data acquisition. Uh, then we can do the full visibility uh, of the platform. Uh, then the, the data is then segmented into sense stream uh, and then uh, trace stream. So sense stream is giving more like a context-based uh, data where it is in the location wise, what is the status of that, uh, uh, that, that asset? Uh, and then trace stream is more like what all happened to that uh, asset? Is it in usable condition? Is it the original? Is it a counterfeit? Uh, that's what the trace stream data is coming. And then most of this data is real time because all these labels are active labels. That means they're always transmitting the current status at a required uh, periodicity. And that's why um, this data is relevant and it's real time and you don't need somebody to scan them to get the uh, data to you. And this is a example uh, of, uh, uh, actually, if I can play it. Not allowing me to play. Uh, basically, what it uh, does is we we have this uh, um, smart label that that you can uh, print through a printer, and then uh, we digitize the your asset ID in the beginning or the origination of the um, the device uh, of the asset. And once you digitize uh, at the origination, from then on, uh, you don't need to do another scan we map the sensor that's inside of the label and then the asset that you're trying to track. And then we use a vision camera to capture that mapping. Once that mapping is done, uh, the rest of the time, uh, this data is automatically read and uh, uh, you know, visualized in, in, a, in a format. And we can feed this data into your ERP systems or if you're, you have your own uh, uh, clinical trial supply systems, we can feed that into, into those systems. And uh, right now we're showing like a high value asset here, uh, but these labels can go in different form factors. We can customize it based on your need. They can go on a wild bottle. Uh, they can go on a primary package, secondary package. Uh, here it is showing it's on a pallet, but uh, it could be on any, any asset. It need not be a pallet. 
Um, so that's uh, uh, what it is. So we, um, as a platform, we can ingest anywhere from unit level um, to the primary package and the crate level to the pallet level. And uh, we can digitize your entire uh, uh, supply chain, uh, both for clinical trials um, and also your uh, main GMP, uh, GDP process. Um, we we'll look at uh, three different areas, logistics and life science and high value goods and uh, 3PLs and life sciences are primary uh, market right now. And we are focused very, uh, uh, very well on the pharma. The, product, the, the platform itself is GAMP5 certified and we're going through the CFR uh, 21 chapter 11 certification to comply with uh, all pharma requirements. Vino, sorry, I have to interrupt you here a little bit because you're also over time. Um, but thank you so much for that great presentation. And also the platform looks really impressive. Um, so for all the others, as always, you can find the entire pitch deck on uh, the startup booth and feel free to mingle and chat uh, with Vino as much as possible. Vino, thank you so much for being here on such early hour for you. And we're looking forward to having you here some po uh, sometime in person. Thank you. All right, fantastic. So now we've seen, well, the uh, collection of data and the generation of data, especially for research purposes, but also for tracking. Um, speaking about data, only within seven years, uh, the all available data has multiplied by a factor of 10. Uh, so from 4.4 to 44 setabytes, that's 10 to the power of 21 bytes. That massive amount of, uh, well, data needs to be processed, but then also for all the algorithms, for the deep learning algorithms that we have out there to be very accurate, that data needs to be annotated. Of course, so much data, it's very difficult for a human being to uh, annotate that by, by yourself. Uh, so our next company has developed here something uh, to support that process. And as you've might seen, we've changed scenery here a little bit. So we're very excited to welcome Mark here to the stage in person in Munich. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you for having me. Cool. Wow. So I feel like I'm about to tell a story. It's very yeah. nice. Very comfortable. Absolutely. Nice. So please take us away. The stage is all yours. Great. Uh, so we're Labelbox, uh, a training data platform. Now, just to set the scene. The last two decades, we've seen tremendous breakthroughs in the AI space. We've seen the media have a field day of new AI stories we could have and um, new AI breakthroughs. But what does that mean for business? For business, that means that we are uncovering new insights through text, images, videos. We are analyzing data much faster that is allowing us to make more informed data-driven decisions, inform strategy across a whole organization, and we're able to automate and make processes, um, automate and make manual processes uh, faster as well, and ensure people are focused on mission-critical tasks, and people are focused on tasks that differentiate their offerings and reduce their uh, time to market. And what does that mean? That presents a challenge as Fabian mentioned, what we see is we see uh, problems around data. Companies have data, but it's not in the right form. Companies have data, but it's not annotated. We don't understand what is in uh, the image. If we want to know what is in the text, we need to understand the context of the text. And therefore, this provides crazy challenges for businesses across all industries to the point where when we looked and we spoke to our to different companies, we saw that 96% of AI um, products and models, they stall uh, before getting implemented, which means that we are still challenged in the way we bring AI to be running 24 seven in production to yield the true value of what is AI and what we've been hearing about for the last 10 to 20 years, right? So realistically, what, what does that mean at a low, at a, you know, lower level? That means that we're seeing AI being siloed across 
different pockets in the organization, which means that we're having less transparency around the AI efforts, showing that AI, which is already a bit complex, is turning into a black box. And what does that mean? That means that people will adopt it less and therefore the AI efforts will not be productive and therefore low confidence across the organization around what they can and cannot do, which is a shame because as Fabian mentioned, we have a lot of data available and data is insight, insight is value. So what is the vision? The vision is having a centralized approach across the whole organization where different members can collaborate, can enhance that training data, can iterate on it in order for uh, transparent, visible progress, ensuring training data is built fast, is built accurately to be used on your models in production. And this is the missing piece of the puzzle. We see in our companies where, you know, models are very easy to implement. Most of them are open source. For those of you who are data scientists, you know that it's five or six lines of Python, which is great. We've overcome that barrier of having models democratized. In terms of computing, we've seen that infrastructure has taken huge leaps. We can store data and, and transmit data much faster now, but we're still yet to make progress on the way we train, our, uh, we train manage, and annotate our data. And this is what it looks like here. You've seen that across all of these layers, we have made progress, but we're still yet to progress in the way we create and manage our training data. And this is where we come in. We offer a tool that's configurable enough so that you can tag with high accuracy and high flexibility intuitively across text, video, images. We offer the transparency and visibility to be working with blended teams, technical, non-technical, internal and external workforces. And then we also offer that iterative nature to ensure that models in production and that the data is iterated in order to stay up to date and your models stay highly performing. And this is what our workflow looks like. From the management of workflows to the annotations to the at iteration I mentioned. And we're seeing success. We're seeing success in healthcare with pathology, which is known to be very precise annotations where you need uh, high quality labels. And we've seen our customer Pathware make tremendous breakthroughs of that and go to market with a pathology uh, analysis tool that they have managed to speed up their time to market with. But we've also seen medical use cases come to life. And medical use cases are quite difficult because you expect a doctor to be able to label things. Well, label box, we challenge that. And we say that non-experts and novices can also participate with the right consistency and a unified collaborative platform. Novices can also provide that manpower to be able to scale your labeling operations, scale your training data, and scale your AI efforts. We're here for two days, so please let me know if you want a demo and uh, please reach out. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Mark. No it's kind of a different story, right? If you have to uh, sit into, in a studio and kind of back the normal stuff. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, it's interesting because there's a camera who's a person, there's you, and then obviously everyone else. But it's great. It's a great experience. It's, it's the first time and you always remember your first. So thank you very much. So yeah, uh, thank you so much, Mark, for nice. being here. Um, we now are by the end of the Roche pitches and we now have a quick break. But for the break, please um, be aware of the, of the platform, use all the functionalities, feel free to mingle with all online participants, um, look at the pitch decks and so on and so forth. But I would say now we will regather at uh, 4.35 p.m. And Mark, let's grab a coffee. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome back everyone. I hope you had, well, some great coffee and are now energetic for our second portion of today's event. Um, with that, we would like to directly jump into, into, well, the next pitches, also our partners and their presentations. So next up, we will see Matt Dugan, the director of the business garage of Novo Nordis. Unfortunately, they don't have any startups this time, but they've been very busy um, with, the, with the projects we started off last, the last time, and we're very excited to have them here for the next one. 
So Matt, please take it away. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Matt Dugan. I, I head up an area in Nova Nordisk called the Business Innovation Garage. Uh, and we typically are part of the Startup Career Sphere programs. Today, we're, we're really sorry that we can't be there for this one, but we are busy working on uh, some of the programs that we started last time. So we're looking at how we create solutions uh, together with the startups for people with obesity and people with diabetes. Uh, and we're seeing great promise in finding ways to connect patients together with other patients raise disease awareness and more innovative solutions that startups are bringing into our business. We're really excited to participate in the upcoming batch where we'll be looking again at cardiometabolic diseases, how to raise awareness for things like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, venturing into, into new areas as well as in obesity and maybe even other serious chronic diseases like Alzheimer's. If anyone knows of a startup or if you're working at a startup where you think you can help us, definitely reach out because we're keen to build more collaboration with the community. Fantastic. Well, we're very excited to have them joining us next time within cardiometabolic diseases and all the other areas that Matt touched base on. Um, so very excited for that. But now we also have our partner Biotronic um, and they are here today represented. So we, uh, I would like to welcome Dr. Volker Lang, the Senior Vice President of R&D for Cardiac Rhythm Management to the stage, and he will tell us more about their vision and where they're going with that batch. So, Volker, it's great to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a short check. You see my screen, and uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, perfectly. So, as usual, I like to start with the Biotronic ecosystem. So we are doing implantable devices, implantable pacemakers, defibrillators, or implantable monitors. And they're then automatically transmitted every day to a data processing center. We call it home monitoring. Then we do a lot of analysis on the data. And then a physician is informed via push messages if there's an, an urgent need for attention, or we automatically send the data to an electronic health record system of the hospitals or the physician care centers and so on and so forth. We also by now integrated a various sensor, which are usually transmitted via the smartphone of the users, but they all end up in our big data processing unit. So this is our ecosystem. It's the same which I presented last time. And we are again extremely happy that with the help of the startups, we are able to enrich our environment. So for this batch, we wanted to do three things. Number one is we want to look for a new type of sensor, type of sensor we didn't look before. And I will explain it in a second. The second is uh, you see in the brain, we using already technologies for artificial intelligence, but for machine learning and deep learning, you need training data. And uh, since uh, we do analysis, for example, on ECGs, surface ECGs, you need annotated surface ECG, which is then used for development of machine learning or deep learning environment. So we're looking for a, a source founding a, a feature so we can get a lot of ECGs annotated. And last but not least, uh, we talk about patients and uh, they're treated by our devices, but often also the behavior of the device, uh, of the patient is critical. So does the patient change their diet if they are uh, having certain heart problems? Do they do their regular exercises? So we thought here we could invest into a patient education content so we can help the patient become better, have a better lifestyle and therefore improve their outcome by a lot. So those were our three uh, approaches for this time. And we are very glad that again, we had uh, a selection from very different uh, um, startups, very interesting startups, and we're very excited that we're able to select again three startups. Number one, for the um, new sensor systems, we are doing now risk stratification from voice analysis. For us, uh, absolutely new technology would be a nice add-on to our environment. So I'm look really looking forward for the presentation of the startup. Second, we found uh, a resource who uh, can help us with crowdsourcing of um, 
uh, annotated uh, surface ECG. And last but not least, we also found a good help uh, enrich our environment also for the interactive patient education. And those three um, startups are Evocal Health, very interesting, Toloka for the crowdsourcing, also very interesting, and MyM Health for the patient education. You know, we did already a lot of, had a lot of positive feedback uh, for the batch six and giving our partners, our startup partners for batch seven, I'm looking very, very positive in the future and I expect a lot for the batch seven. So this is what we have in mind for Biotronics. This is what we are working on the next couple of months. And I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very much from Biotronic. Us in batch six uh, with such a, an amazing selection of companies and such an outcome. So, fantastic. Now we had the introduction already. Uh, we will have a slightly different order, but uh, with that, I'd like to start, start with the second company um, Volker mentioned. It is a company dealing with time series data. How they do it? I would like to hand it over to Paul uh, to tell us a little bit more about Toloka and what they do. So Paul, please join us on stage um, and feel free to take us away. Thank you very much for the introduction. Let me just share my screen. You can see my screen okay now. Yes, we do. Fantastic. Very good. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. Very pleased to be involved in today's excellent event and hear the wide range of startups that we're involved as part of the Creosphere. Um, I'm responsible for sales and commercial partnerships at Toloka, and I'll give you an overview about our unique value proposition associated with data labeling particularly focused on AI and machine learning area. So this is an overview of what I will talk about today in terms of Toloka's history, where we've applied high level data labeling solutions across multiple verticals and clients who we worked with in the appendix. We probably won't get to that, but I understand Christina will share materials with delegates later. So just to give a bit of background about Toloka, We've been in business for 14 years now. Essentially, we are the core technology that underpins Yandex verticals. And we had a problem like many startups associated with labeling data. Uh, you have to recruit a, a greater exponential number of crowd in order to complete that labeled data. And in terms of identifying a solution for Yandex, we built our own crowdsourcing platform so currently we have over 10 million workers based um, all over the world and we've built AI into our platform to ensure that um, the labeled data that we produce is of the highest quality available. So these are our, this is our company in, in stats at that moment. We have over 10,000 active daily projects in terms of data labeling. We're available 24-7. We're operating in over 100 countries and we have over 40 languages available for data labeling. Within Toloka, we've actually built products and we've got success across each of these individual verticals. Specifically in this round, we'll be working with Biotronic on health, but equally we've um, worked with partners across all of these verticals to deliver practical products. So why, why data labeling? Well, for us, building AI and machine learning models, hardware and algorithms have essentially become commoditized products. There's standard solution providers that are available software as a service, but the real differentiator for you in building AI and machine learning models is the quality of the data. And that really is what we see when we're working with partners as the critical step in terms of business success for the models that are built 
and we believe that to Toloka is the best solution for delivering the highest quality labeled data for training those models. If you look at the actual um, challenge associated with labeling data, images, text or voice, it, it's actually subject to diminishing returns and this gives an overview in terms of what we deem appropriate levels associated with attention, building a model on image classification. So you can see that to achieve quality labels of 90 to 95 percent takes an incredible amount of effort, but that's typically where to local levels sit. So we have um, two solutions available in Taloka. One is Taloka Platform, which is a highly customizable solution, giving engineers the ability to completely tweak and modify the approach for labeling uh, for every different task. And then we have Taloka Apps, which is uh, has pre-built workflow and is the quickest time to market in terms of delivering high quality labels across many use cases. So for mature AI companies, Taloka platform is the most appropriate solution. And these would typically be the six different steps to deliver those high quality labeled data at the end. And the engineers would have full flexibility associated with tailoring the instructions and the manner in which that is done. For those companies that are perhaps earlier in this stage of AI or machine learning or have lower level of maturity, then Taloka apps essentially removes four of those steps, leaving the company or partner to just work with Taloka to decompose the task and complete the instructions to deliver high quality data. In terms of what apps Taloka apps provides, we have pre-built use cases ready to launch and these are applicable for all individual sectors that we work with so these are some examples of priority use cases that we deliver with our customers and partners so in image set classification we do web search information and text classification as well we have uh, two text classification we do video classification and then we have web image and text classification and then uh, finally text web page classification and then we have two that are due to launch soon which are, are shown here uh, in terms of credentials just to give a, a quick overview we worked with one of the leaders in the consumer electronics industry uh, they currently annotate their online catalog and they needed a faster solution with higher quality label data we're in an area in a, a time where hyper personalized recommendations is what most businesses are striving for um, the solution offered was to show, well, deliver so apps and, and, uh, and we delivered 2,000 label photos in 11 hours from setting the task up with a, with a daily capacity of over 100,000 labels. So the final data quality for that was 98%, 5% higher quality than their existing DIY or self-serve solution and it was completed 50% quicker. And our cost for that was seven cents per individual label. Uh, another customer that we've worked with is one of the major manufacturers of smart devices. So again, they needed uh, to scale up their volume and they, because they're a reasonably small internal labeling te team, they turned to us in terms of uh, solving their bounding box issues. So we delivered 2,000 label photos in less than two days, and we can currently have capacity for up to 50,000 labels a day. And the final data quality there was 93.5%, 3% above their existing self-serve solution. So you can see with these clients, the fast turnaround, the low cost, and the very high levels of final quality data. And this is the same approach working with um, Biotronic that will be labeling the ECGs. 
So there's uh, additional appendix available here that gives more detail about Taloka, and I'm sure that Christina will circulate that after today's event. Thank you very much. I will. Thank uh, you, Paul. Thank you. Very impressive figures you just showed. Um, so thank you very much for presenting that. And also thank you for your dedication, um, dialing in from the airport. Uh, I'm sure, <laughs> Sorry for the uh, background I'm sure there's a lot of interactions afterwards and a lot of people are following up. So for all for the entire audience, please use the functionalities of the platform to also mingle with Paul and get some further information. But with that, thank you so much, Paul, for dialing in. Thank and you. I've just, I've just added a link to my LinkedIn address on the, in the chat as well. Thank you very much. All right. So we now had another data annotation company, and we're now moving slightly away from that, more towards the patient education space. The next company actually launched a com uh, uh, an application called MyCOPD, which was the first nationally reimbursed digital therapeutic in the UK. How they took that offering and developed it to the current um, status of the offering, I, will, I would like to welcome Simon Bourne, the CEO, to the stage. Yeah, thank Hi, you very much for that kind introduction and good afternoon, everybody. Um, Myam Health is a, an AI-driven digital therapeutics company. And what does digital therapeutics mean? Um, digital therapeutics um, are mobile health applications that have evidence that they benefit patients, often through randomized controlled trial studies. Um, we link our digital therapeutics to a patient platform, which you can see on the right. Um, but all the really cool stuff happens in the middle here. This is where we uh, have our secret source, which runs algorithms, it runs data that's integrated through um, electronic healthcare records, Bluetooth devices, um, and runs guidelines, national international guidelines um, for the management of different conditions. We are a clinical led company. So my background is I was a respiratory consultant. Um, I saw there was a real issue in managing my patients in my um, Southampton city, which is in the UK. I had 6,000 patients that I needed to put through pulmonary rehabilitation, but only had capacity to rehabilitate around about 130 per year. So the only way to scale that up was through digital therapeutics. Um, my chairman is Tom Wilkinson, who was my co-founder. Um, he's a professor of medicine at Southampton University. And the, the health tech stack is being delivered by someone who was at JP Morgan and our UX for Paul, Gal, Paul Cooper, who was a GUI specialist at uh, Vitality. Um, and we just brought on board um, somebody who a lot of people may know, Joel Sangerman, um, who was the ex chief commercial officer at Click Therapeutics, is now working with us on expansion in the US. So, in a nutshell, what does Myome Health do? Well, we assess patients through validated patient recorded outcome measures. So things like the CLB assessment test or the asthma control test. Um, we run other driven health assessments, such as exacerbation frequency, hospitalization, the medication you're taking, et cetera. And then we deliver a personalized evidence-based digital intervention to each of our patients. And the cool thing about doing this is that everybody receives an individualized experience. There are tens of thousands of different permutations that run through the apps to, to drive those different uh, digital therapeutics. But we can't do this without our, our clinical population. We need to bring them on board to be able to scale up digital therapeutics to really fulfill our ambition, which is delivering population level um, patient interventions. For clinicians, we um, deliver interventions that enable them to remotely monitor. Um, we help them identify patients who are most at risk of things like an exacerbation or hospital admission. And we want them to be able to deliver um, rehabilitation and clinical reviews to all patients. So rather than this one-to-one -one where you have a clinician and a patient interaction, we're looking at clinicians being able to run thousands of patients through remote consultations that are driven by artificial intelligence. And the best way to do this is by running a population-based infrastructure where you deliver everything from self-management. So we empower patients to understand more about the condition. We then help patients understand more about their conditions. So they can try follow-ups with their clinical team. We help clinical teams to monitor patients who are most at risk of hospital admissions or exacerbations. And then at the highest level, we can run virtual wards for those people who have just been discharged from hospital or those people who are at significant risk of being admitted to hospital. So on the left is our suite of uh, digital therapeutics. So we cover heart disease, 
um, everything from acute coronary syndromes to um, implantations to um, post coronary artery bypass grafting. Um, my COPD obviously looks after patients with COPD, my diabetes, asthma, a COVID virtual ward, and Hire is our platform that we built with AstraZeneca to manage patients with lung cancer remotely. The personalized medical um, personalized medicine experience that patients see is driven by machine learning principles, um, electronic healthcare integration, device integration with things like on one blood pressure machines, on one scales. Um, glucose monitors that delivered by Agamatrix and GlucoRx, and other um, activity monitor solutions from Apple and Fitbit. And then we enable those uh, clinical teams to deliver remote patient monitoring, um, deliver population level risk stratification, and accelerated accurate clinical decisions. Um, because we don't have much time, we're just going to talk a little bit about what we do for COPD patients. So we solve three of the greatest challenges in COPD. Um, patients can't access pulmonary rehab, so we give them access to a solution. Um, patients are unable to take their medication correctly in around about 70% of occasions, so we're able to collect their medical device errors through structured education, and we help patients manage their, um, their COPD to prevent them having exacerbations and ending up in hospital. These are um, stats from the States which show that just 1.9% of people that need pulmonary rehab receive it within the first six months. And on the right hand side there, you see that people that don't receive pulmonary rehab within those timelines have a hugely increased mortality. So we've got 7% mortality in people that do receive rehab uh, within 90 days and 20% mortality within 90 days for patients that don't. And we're a digital therapeutic because we've got evidence from randomized clinical studies. Uh, so the Trooper study uh, revealed that we could deliver exactly the same outcomes as face-to-face -face pulmonary rehabilitation using our digital therapeutic. The rescue study looked at patients who were admitted to hospital and we showed we could reduce readmission rates by 30%. And the early study was looking at improving patient symptoms in inhaler technique. Um, and all these are published and accessible through our website. Um, so my COPD does six things. We deliver self-directed care planning. We do assessment and diagnostics. We make sure patients can take their medication correctly. We do remote monitoring for clinical teams and we have data reports and then we see the impact of treatment decisions and obviously our virtual rehab program. It's no good having a digital therapeutic if patients can't take it. Um, so we're WAG uh, 2.1 compliant. Around about 80% of patients complete our education and rehab programs and up to 80% of people that are invited into our, our programs become active users. But the core thing comes because we've got so many patients now connected to the system. So from 250,000 patient episodes, we're now able to identify the patients who are most at risk of an exacerbation and a hospital admission. We let them know which, which, which category they fall into. And also we supply them a number of options. Am I on the right medication? Um, have I done everything I need to um, optimize my health? How do I enter upon my rehab program? We use very simple user interfaces to, people, uh, to drive people to the right interventions. We're now moving into AI machine learning. I've been working with a big metallistics group across Europe, and we're now able to predict with some accuracy patients who are likely to exacerbate within the next three days. And this led to a 2.1 million grant from NHS England to help us develop my smart COPD, which will um, improve the accuracy of that prediction modeling. So we're based in the UK. This is where we do our R&D, but we have big international ambitions. Um, so we've got currently 60,000 active users, uh, last year, we delivered 275,000 rehabilitation education sessions. My heart is now being translated into five European languages, ready to be deployed across Europe. Um, we work with a number of big pharma companies to help develop market access solutions um, and health insurance, such as Vitality. Um, but our big, big market now, which we're trying to um, get into, is the States. And we're doing with our partners, uh, Foley Hogue um, and Joel Sangman's leading on that. So in summary, we deliver benefits to the entire health market. Patients have access to solutions 24 seven. Providers can deliver new care models. Payers are happy because we were able to do this at reduced cost. And we help the pharmaceutical companies and medical device manufacturers um, with um, market access entry and something to accompany um, their solutions. So series A rounds we're currently going through at the moment, we are aiming to raise 30 million pounds to invest in accelerating our commercialization developing more clinical trials and evidence generation and driving innovation as well through our platform, improving our AI and machine learning prediction modeling. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Simon, and congratulations to those fantastic 
figures and those outcomes of all the clinical trials that you did. Um, so if you're interested in uh, having any discussions with Simon around their upcoming Series A, also about their expansion or their interaction here with Startup Creosphere, please feel free to go to their booth to interact with Simon. Uh, si Simon, he's more than happy to take your questions and also schedule follow-up meetings. Thank you so much, Simon, for being here. I'm looking forward to have you on the ground soon. All right. So Simon was talking about, well, timely interventions. And there's one biomarker out there that could potentially also go into that direction to really predict incidences. I'm speaking about voice. Voice has a multitude of different facets and can help to early diagnose, for instance, neurodegenerative diseases. At least there are good studies showing uh, an early onset. But then there's also another indication most people tend to not think about when they think about voice as a biomarker, and that's cardiovascular. So our next company is Evocal Health, and they're taking, well, voice as a biomarker for cardiovascular. You already know the drill. We just switched places here. So that means we have someone joining us on stage. So I'd like to welcome Philip to the stage, and we're very excited to have you here today. Good to see you. Thank you. Good nice to, to be on you. stage here. Yeah, it's, it's a different experience, right? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It's great to see people without an interface, without yeah. the screen between. How tall they are. Yeah, you see, crazy. Right? <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, the stage is yours. Please take us away. Thank you very much. Yeah, my name is Philip. Philip, I'm the co-founder of Evocal Health, a digital diagnostics company based in Hamburg, Germany. Imagine 365 days in the life of a patient. Every dot you see here on the left represents one day in the life of a patient. Every red dot represents the day when the symptoms of the patient worsen. Every blue one represents those days where the patient seeks for advice at the physician or in the clinic. And you see there's pretty much gray spot here left. Spot that is not analyzed so far. Digital biomarkers are currently changing the way we understand diseases, giving a more precise picture of a patient's disease progression and his or her response to a certain drug. And that's what we're on with Evocal Health. Evocal Health, I mentioned it, is a digital diagnostics company and we're unlocking the human voice as a biomarker for health. Our CE certified and device agnostic platform enables to collect, monitor, and analyze voice data for remote patient monitoring or decentralized clinical trials. We're developing voice biomarkers independently and in partnerships with life science companies around the world. And that's what we're here for cardiovascular and respiratory diseases. We have a unique medical device approved and privacy compliant platform. And I wanna introduce you now to the details. You might ask yourself, why is the voice such an interesting biomarker? And when it comes to voice as a biomarker, vocal biomarkers are a brand new way to measure and monitor our health every day. They're objective, unbiased data. They deliver non-invasive insights and all of this with minimum patient involvement. Why, what is the mode of action behind? The verbal signal processing requires a large set of tasks for the coordination of different organs, muscles, and sensory nerves. Diseases significantly impact our physiology and major sound producing systems. So the human voice is one of the most complex systems of the human body. And every indication, every disease has a specific voice sound. And that's what we're aiming for. Our technology digitizes and normalizes voice samples. We parameterize these voice samples, and then our AI and ML models comes into place. We do the pattern recognition and detection and correlation of causalities to specific indications with the help of EPROS, evidence-based guidelines, and EHRs. We have, developing, we have been developing a very nice technology during the last months, and this enables remote patient monitoring and decentralized clinical trials. Use our unique vocal biomarker technology, which is objective, precise, and unbiased in a device agnostic and cloud-based service. Our digital health platform is medical device approved, runs under a QMS um, system, and is GDPR compliant. All comes with a patient-centric monitoring tool, an engaging digital user experience for increased adherence. We are SHI reimbursable in Germany in 2022, and we're commercially usable as a health companion so far. 
when it comes to our positioning, we have developed a very unique positioning, positioning in a global run for medically validated vocal biomarkers. We seek for dynamic parameters, not semantic ones, which allows us to have a more language agnostic technology. And we're hardware independent. Our technology runs within a small test around, which covers around 15 seconds of speech data. Everything 100% cloud-based. We're fully integrated into the healthcare system with SHI reimbursability. We have a scalable tech stack that strengthens our real world data acquisition strategy and we're medical device approved in the EU and Germany. Our team consists of, uh, now it's a little bit of lag here. There's a delay, oh, perfect. We're led and, uh, and uh, managed by a very visionary and experienced team with decade long entrepreneurial and clinical experience. My co-founder Dirk discovered the potential of the human voice as a biomarker more than 25 years ago in his early studies. He has been a managing director and chief financial officer, as well as the co-founder of several listed companies in Germany, like the Mologen AG or Biogenerics AG. My co-founder, Hendrik Kleinwächter, um, is a software engineer and very experienced in the development of AI and neural networks. He exited his previous company to market leader Trivago. Personally, I went to Silicon Valley when I was 18 years old. I discovered digital product management from the ground up and have been working during the past years at the intersection of digital products and highly regulated environments. Our mission, is on, our mission is unlocking the human voice as a biomarker for health. And if this sounds interesting to you, I would be happy to talk. You can see here my Calendly link and my LinkedIn. Just tag it and then I'm happy to talk to you. Thank you. Great presentation, Philip. Thank you so much for the insights. Super interesting, the model behind it and how voice might change our future. And you made it through your first half-life uh, presentation. Definitely, yeah. Thank you. So Fantastic. Thank you so much. That was Evocal Health, but that was also our last pitch for today. So my job here is done. Thank you to the audience. It was great having you, great hosting you. And I'd like to hand it back over to Frederica. Yes. So welcome back from my side. Thank you, Fabian, for the great moderation of the startup pitches. Congratulations to all founders and startup representatives for your great pitches and for sharing your technologies that you're working on. And uh, congratulations and welcome to the Startup Creosphere program. And that's a wrap for today. So with that, I would like to thank everyone for participating. It's great to see we had over 130 virtual participants at peak and 30 here in the office. So thank you everybody for joining us and um, for staying in touch with us and for continuing the journey with us all along. So, but first and foremost, I would like to thank the team here on the ground behind the cameras and in front of the camera. So thank you very much for your hard work, for preparing this event and for preparing this batch because Obviously, today is just the tip of the iceberg that everyone is seeing and the hard work and finding the right startups from the corporate side and from our side and then bringing them together with the startups today is just the result. And then we are very much looking forward to the upcoming program. Also, as you know, here in Munich in the office, we have a huge office with a huge co-working space. So if you're interested or around and you would like to get in touch with us here in Munich, we're more than happy to welcome you here and also to stay in touch for the future. Of course, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, through our website, where you can see always the latest trends within the healthcare space. And please come to our expo of this batch, where you actually see what the startups have been working on over the next upcoming months. And that will be a real hybrid event, hopefully. So very much looking forward to welcoming you here in our big event space, a couple of meters from the studio setup. With that being said, thank you very much for joining us today. Congratulations, good luck and lots of success for the pilot teams from the corporate side and the startup side and looking forward to welcoming you here again soon. Thank you.